Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Childhood Finds and thank you for joining me for part two of my eBay sales and a little bit of Poshmark and Mercari sprinkled in. Um, I don't have much else to add from part one. I just wanted to add, I said this in the end of the last video, but I did want to share if you'll please write in the comments your favorite sale, your personal sale that is either your best sale or your favorite in the last couple of weeks. I always love hearing about those and chatting with you about them and I get to learn from those as well. So please write those in the comments and then again I have a lot of sales to get through on this one so we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay so let's get started with part two. If you haven't watched part one I will link that down in the description. My hair is a little wild here. Okay, that's better, acceptable. And so let's start with this first one. This is a 1999 Sir Andrew the Armor Bearer. See what they did there? Bear, 10 inch plush, Ephesian 6 with the tag. And I paid $2 for him and he sold, I don't know, in a couple days. He sold for $30 my full asking price. And I picked him up at a thrift store and he is very cute and he's got his tag. These guys, there was a good, there was an excellent sell through rate on these guys. So very quick sale. <clears throat> these are OTB One Tough brand jean denim shorts, size 32. I paid $2 for these. They sold for full asking price. The buyer has already left feedback and is very happy with them. I, I will say like I'm slowly, clothing is very slowly growing on me like a small urchin. I do, I really like that after I've taken the pictures and I've listed it, it's so easy to ship it, especially because a lot of them I'll pre-pack into the bubble mailers and so I just grab them and slap the label on. So that is something excellent about the clothing right now. And again, it does not shatter, which I do love things that don't shatter. So 16 bucks. This is a McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero action figure. It's a new open box and there's some box damage. And I say open box because it looked like it had been and they had the, they had the like little two inch tape covering the top. So it wasn't in perfect condition, but the item is. So again, like if you watch my last video, I priced it in between the new and used price and it sold quickly for full asking price here of $16 and I have $2 into it. This is a 2011 Starbucks 20 Venti Logo 20 ounce coffee mug and it sold very quickly. I paid 50 cents for this at a yard sale where I bought a whole bunch of Starbucks mugs and a lot of Starbucks mugs, you're gonna be waiting for them to sell, but some do sell quickly and have a good sell through. So $19, I was very happy with. And it is, I do believe this one was going internationally when it sold. This one is super fun. So this is a Monkey's 45 record tote holder, Ray Burt Productions Mattel. It's 19, or 1966. And there's many flaws so I share this too to say don't throw away items that don't look amazing because sometimes there's gonna be broken pieces and they can still sell for really good money I took a best offer of a hundred dollars for this and it's already I already got good feedback from the buyer and they were so happy with it because they said they really love the character art so it has a great graphic here, the caricatures, and it has these fast meal signatures too. So I, I just made it clear the flaws in the description. So I said, you know, the handle is broken. It's, it's dirty, there's mystery stains. There's a lot wrong, but overall it's in solid condition, rough, roughly, it's in solid condition. Inside looked good and the lock still the little turner up here to open it still worked so it was still a good piece and we paid two dollars for this at a garage sale my mother-in-law picked this out and it sold i mean in a day a definitely it was a day i think and it's it's a very hard to find one so if it if you find one in better condition you can get upwards of two hundred dollars this is an Ultra Pro 10 9 Pocket Pages Ultra, Bo 
Ultra Ball Pokemon card binder. And I bought four of these card binders at a yard sale for two each. And so I got three Ultra Balls because yellow is my favorite color. So that kind of snuck into it. And I thought they would be more desirable and a little less common than I bought one Pokeball one. So I lotted a Pokeball and an Ultra Ball together. And so far I've sold just this one, but that paid for all of them. It sold for full asking of $13. This is a Comstock Pewter Swimming Mermaid. It had rhinestones and it was from 1993 and very petite. It was four and a half inches and it took, I so it has some things going for it. So mermaids are something to pick up. Mermaids, a lot of times you should look them up because they are popular and collectible and Pewter has been pretty popular as well. And so it had both of those things going for it. So $17 and I think we paid a dollar or so for this. We bought a little tiny bulk lot of mermaid stuff at a garage sale. And this is one of my big like blow my mind kind of sales just because I don't know clothing very well. So we went to an estate sale that had been going for a couple weekends, I think. So this is a Gun Sachs Jessica San Francisco size 11 boho hippie dress lace zip and read and as is so i took a best offer of 250 i do know that i probably could have got more but i was so happy and thrilled and tickled pink with my sale that i was fine taking this i know these can go for bigger money so the thing about this one and two is i started an auction a 10-day auction at 200 dollars and I was doing my typical kind of end and sell similar and somehow this one got put in with that even though it wasn't I always do just my listings that are about to end well I guess that makes sense now so it got muddled muddied in with all of those other listings and I ended it on the last day there had been no bid so it didn't hurt anything but there's no notification to say are you sure you want to end this nothing so it ended it after waiting nine days so I got frustrated and I just priced it on a best offer case because I didn't want to go through another auction. And so I got an offer from a buyer and I just want to talk for a second about the buyer because I want to say to kind of stick to your guns sometimes. So this was, the buyer is international so they paid a lot to get it to them for customs, etc., all of that and they were wanting a discount on shipping. And I just made it perfectly clear, if you're doing international guys, just make it perfectly clear, you have no control over the rest of the shipping. I showed her a screenshot of exactly how much I received for the shipping. Might gonna sneeze, might sneeze, maybe, maybe not. Not, okay, just water eyes. Uh, sorry, excuse me. And so I just showed her a screenshot of how much it was gonna how much i got paid from her for her shipping and then i showed her later a screenshot of how much i paid which was more than what she paid because i added insurance to it so i just stuck to my guns because the part of me thought about just refunding the shipping i i was gonna have to pay but then i'm out you know the that all of that money and she agreed to it and she paid it. So I just made it clear what it cost for me and what I received. So the rest of it was on her. She decided to have this shipped internationally to her. So just keep that in mind that stick to, stick to your guns sometimes. And I haven't heard back. So I just, I just let her know what it was and I am fine with doing that. I just professionally told her. and um oh i guess we should go back there the flaws were there was a hole there was some loose threads i just made that all clear in the description and i paid ten dollars for this and it sold quickly after i had to go through the auction so it took a couple weeks to get sold but i i knew it was something when i grabbed it but i didn't know how much but some of these dresses can go for amazing money maybe mine could have gone for more i don't care i'm really happy with the sale right now because I'm still very, very new in clothing. So any big wins I will take. This is a Sony CFM-140 portable AM FM radio, boombox cassette player. I did test all the features and 
I didn't add the video because typically what I do with things like this is I will take a small video of the radio working, a small video of the cassette player working, all of those features, and then I'll splice them in together as a small video. So then I can include that, but I didn't for this. And it, But it sold super fast. I have about a dollar into this. We went to an estate sale where the family was just trying to clear the house and they had a lot of electronics. So I picked this up with a cup with a lot of other things. So I have, yeah, roughly a dollar in and sold for full asking of 33 in a cup. I mean, a day or two, it was listed. I always pick this game up if I find it. It's a Pirates of the Caribbean, Pirates Dice game, Dead Men's Chess. There were no instructions. So I just, I paid up for this. I paid $4 for this, which is a little too much. But typically I can get 20 out of this, but I didn't check for the instructions. And so I, got, I took a best offer of 15 just to again, move it fast. So I don't have to move it in a month. So still made a profit, but typically this game, you're always looking at around 20, 20 plus for it. This is an antique Victorian Walnut deep well oval frame fits an eight by 10 and it's from the 1800s um, it, or it's, it's 1880s turn of the century kind of age and it was in good condition we picked up another one of these at a little bulk frame buy and we paid up slightly but we paid 10 for this frame and it sold in a week or two for 45 dollars this i didn't share this on the channel but i did a little bulk buy of transistor radios and so far, I mean, I've found quite a few working and this is one of the best ones. This is a vintage Radio Shack, real, realistic transistor radio, yellow Tandy Corporations. It does work. I included a video of it working. It sold for full asking of $30 very quickly. I have 50 cents into each radio I purchased. I'm gonna say I have probably a 30% fail rate on them not working. Um, so, I'm okay with that because I don't have very much money into them. But yeah, I think we bought, I think it was like 40 radios or so. The little transistor radios are popular and they're not very common. So definitely pick them up if they're cheap because you do have to find out if they work. This is a realistic gray and silver tarantula spider, a nine inch plus plush by Gans and it sold for full asking for $24 and it is going to Europe. So it's traveling across the ocean and he's cute. I think I paid 50 cents or a dollar for him. So I mean, I'm just I'm excited about that sale. Anytime you can sell a plush for $24, it's an exciting day because they're so easy to ship and picture. So I'm really happy with that sale. This is a today's new international version Bible from 2007. It's Renaissance fine leather. TNIV is the today's new international version as the little acronym. And I took a best offer of $75. I'm going to talk a little slightly about this too as well to stick to what you stick to your stick to your guns essentially. I got offered 75 and I took it. And I probably would have took less because I only have a dollar into this. But then the buyer messaged me and said, actually, I want to offer you 50. And so if it had been in negotiation still, if we were still going back and forth in offers, I may have gone back and forth on my price. But once I accept an offer, I'm sticking to that. I mean, after they've already agreed to that price, I'm not okay changing it. And then after I rejected 50, they said, actually, I meant to write 65. So I was just, I just made it clear. I said, no, 75 was the agreed upon price. You just have to talk professionally and be kind and be fair. And they ended up paying and I sent it off on its way. So, you know, just stick to what you want. And once I accept an offer, I'm not going to change the price of it. And it was in good condition, very nice. You could feel it. I remember picking this up and you can feel how nice the leather is. Oh, you know when it's good leather. And so this is another pony. This is a My Little Pony Crystal Princess Unicorn. Bright Brightly is her name. And she has a, pr a brush. And it sold for full asking of $17. I mean, come on. 
a Generation 3 pony selling for $17. I'll jump up and down for that. And I have 51 cents into each pony that I sell. This is um, a Remington barrel. My fiance used it in his schooling. And so I think we might be making a slight profit on it, maybe, or just breaking even. So, you know, once you use items, if you don't need them anymore, you can still sell them and break even on them. That's a great way to, you know, get what you need out of them. So that's what we did. It sold for full asking of $150 in a couple of days. This is a Credence Clearwater Revival Green River record and is the record was in really good condition and the cover was in really good condition. I think I have a dollar into this and it sold for $10. This is Low Rider Clothing Men's Jeans and it's a 46 by 32. It had its tags and so it was in great condition. And I took a best offer of $25 because it had been listed for a bit. And that's great. I think I have two, I have $2 into these pants because I bought them at the thrift store near me. I bought two of these. This is a GPX portable CD player and headphones. It wasn't a super sought after model, but I had two of them. I think I paid about a buck a piece and both of them sold this week for $15. So $2 into 30 is something I will not sneeze at. This is a 1985 Avanti Applause English Sheepdog, and it sold for a best offer of $30, which I think is fantastic. He is bigger at 16 inches, um, but I'm really excited about this sale. I think it's a great sale. And I always tend to pick up, let me see the tag really quick. I try to always pick up the Avantis, especially if they're a dog breed. They, they're they a really good, a good one to pick up because they tend to sell for a little bit extra. This is a Clementoni. I've, found, I've had good luck with this brand. So I've had a fair amount that they sell for decent money. And so it's a Clementoni fluorescent San Francisco thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. puzzle. And I took a best offer, $25 for it. Um, I did get requested to do another puzzle video, so I will be working on that next week. It was, the request was Ravensburger, I believe. So I've already started to do a little bit of work on that. So do look for that. That'll come out in the next week or two. And I think I have probably $2 into this puzzle. I think I got this at a thrift store. And it sold in, I think a month or two. This I bought with, along with the radio at that little estate sale. So about a dollar into this, I took a best offer of 85 for this one. It's a Naxa Bluetooth DVD boombox and TV with microphone and it is wild. But yeah, no, it literally plays it. I mean, yeah. And it was based, it was brand new, but the box had been open and there's a little bit of box damage. So I just put it as open box and $85. I think I had it listed maybe a week. So this big guy is on its way out already, but you can see all the cords and everything are right there. So that was a great little profit. This is my, my terrible pictures. Cause again, I'm just kind of waiting for all my old listings with terrible pictures to just kind of work themselves out. I know I should retake them, but it's working my method. It's a purple glass vase, bottle flask, MMA is the mark on the bottom for, and that is for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's ribbed and it's not very big. So it's, yeah, it's less than six inches. Let me see if you can see the mark at all. <laughs> yeah, these are my really terrible pictures. Yeah, these are terrible. There's shadows. I That's sitting on a box because I can see the little corner. Eh. It sold for full asking, I'm happy. Or did it? I might have sold for 15 or something like that. I can't find it exactly, but it might have sold for 15. But still, I n remember I got this for free. It was at the end of a, a sale and people were done and we were driving by it on our way out of town. So we stopped and grabbed this along with another one that looked like it that sold a while back. This is a souvenir guide for Santa Cruz County Big Trees Park, Redwoods. And 
I took a best offer for 18 or not 18, $8. I have, you know, maybe like 50 cents or less into this. So that's why I love ephemera because it was so easy to take pictures of and ship. I just have three little pictures that show absolutely everything. It was in good condition and already is on its way to its home. This is a Michigan Wolverines Nike wool hat with tags, um, adjustable football. I, I don't know much about sports. I did a bulk hat lot by last or this last weekend that you'll see another hat from. I bought 65 hats and it was at a sale where it was essentially they were just, they were people that clear out houses that have already kind of gotten to the point of being condemned or what have you. And so typically none of the stuff can be sold in the house, but they said this one was in decent condition. So they had a sale and so everything was super cheap and the bot, the hats were 50 cents a piece. Um, and I was digging through and then I, I felt bad because another guy came by and like sat right next to me and he's like, those are nice hats you're looking at. And so I was about to share the box with him when the guy holding the sale looked at me and he said, you can have the box for $5. So I just piled everything in the box and <laughs> apologized to the guy that I, I am not going to be sharing. I am sorry, but I am paying $5 for this whole box. And so it was, I have eight cents into each hat I bought at that sale. And so I haven't gone through them all. A lot of them need a lot of cleaning, but it's gonna be a really good one. I do have a short video that shows you some, most of the hats I bought. It, I can link that down below, but it was a fun sale. I mean, that's why I love being an everything seller because my bulk buys so far this year have been, I bought the transistor radios. I bought my little ponies hats. I know I've had some others, so it's just fun. It's a lot of fun to find new things. And some of the hats are really worth some money. So it's exciting. Again, this wasn't one of them. You'll see one of those later, but I do have, uh, I've only gone through a few of the hats and I have, I think two or three already that are worth 30 plus. So I'm happy. I have eight cents into each hat. So I don't care if they sell for $10 or, you know, around there. Oops. So let's keep rumbling. And this is another little radio. It's a vintage Panasonic handheld AM radio, seven transistor model. And I did a little video of it working and it sold for a best offer of $15, 50 cents into this guy. This is a vintage brass swans planters set of two. I don't really know if they can be used as planters. They're like this big, but I put it in there anyway. And they're, so they're four and a half and five and a half inches. I took a best offer of $12 because it's, I mean, I think I have a dollar into them maybe. So I was fine with that sale. <laughs> this is cute. They're <laughs> just so cute. So this is a lot of four vintage troll dolls. It has damn Unita Ace novelty in it. So let me see if I can show you some of the marks. I know I took pictures. So there is Unita. And that's Ace Novelty. And there's the damn one. Those are typically the ones you really want to look for. But none of them held a ton of value. So I just, I managed to pick up four of them. I picked up two at one sale. And then I went to a Salvation Army and found two more. So I just lotted them all together that weekend. And they sold for full asking of $19. I think I have probably about $2 to $2.50 into this whole lot. So that, that works for me. They were easy to ship. This is a Holman Study Bible, and it's large print. It's leather touch, which essentially means faux leather, but it was in really nice condition. I took a best offer of 35 because I just want to get things moving. I bought this in the estate sale where I bought the boom box and the cassette player. So I've already made plenty. I've already made my money on that sale. I think I paid 50 for everything I got there. And so you've seen three items from there. And so about a dollar into this guy, maybe a little more. So I'm good with that. This is a jelly cat, um, London plush. It's a nine inch fuddle waddle. I love when I sell the fuddle waddles and it's a cream kitty and it's just cute. It's just adorable. 
I think I have 50 cents to a dollar into this and it sold for full asking of 19. It did take a couple months to sell, a lot of back and forth low offers, but it just took a little time. And this came out of the bulk hat lot. I took a best offer of 10 for this one because it wasn't in very good condition. So some of these hats I'm gonna try to clean, but the ones that don't hold a ton of value or the ones that I know that the stains are gonna be a little harder to get out, I'm just selling them as is. So this is a vintage 1986 New York Mets World Champs hat and snapback. And I'll show you. So there's a stain here that I showed in the pictures and then it's got some dirty spots on it, but overall it's in decent condition. And, but $10 with good, I have eight cents into it. So $10 is fantastic. And this I paid too much for, and I just took a best offer to get it going. It's a The Sculptures of El Tajin Vera Cruz, Mexico by Michael Campen. And it's a cool book. The dust jacket's not in perfect condition, but I took a best offer. I think it was of $23 or so, um, somewhere right around that. And it had free shipping. So I think I paid $3 for this book. So it's not a huge profit, but still a profit and it's getting moving. This is Snuffles. <laughs> I always pick up gun Snuffles when I find them. And so this is a gunned plush white polar bear 12 inch Snuffles 1980 with his original hang tag, which was super fun. And it sold for full asking of $30. I did pay $3 for this guy, but I'm still making a profit. I, yeah, but there's different colors of Snuffles that can go for better money. So I always pick up gun Snuffles. Let me show you if I have the tag where it says it. There's Gund, do I have where it says Snuffles? No, but I, it, sometimes it will say Snuffles and then sometimes it won't. I think the older ones don't, but this was 1980, you can see on the tag. And then this is just a Mercari sale. I picked up, I think about 10 Five Nights at Freddy's, 10 or 15 Five Nights at Freddy's plush. And some of them can go for really big money. All of mine were, you know, the lower dollar ones, but I'm just blotting up some of them. And so I have $2 into this lot and it's a lot of two Foxy Five Nights at Freddy's plush. And it's from 2016, they're eight inches. And I sold it for $18 very quickly on Mercari. And again, $2 into them. And I've sold some others from that. I paid a dollar each for all the Five Nights at Freddy's, but pretty much anytime I find those guys, I will buy them but there are some that can go for really good money. So I hope you enjoyed this one and there was quite a few sales and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.